the angles congruent we want to talk about in the five proofs you had last night. Any questions about showing those angles congruent? Drop your calculator, man. Grab your calculator, guys, as you're coming in, please. Anything at all on the homework we want to review? Going? If not, it's not a big deal. Hopefully, again, remember, just a reminder, the angles you needed to prove congruent before saying the lines are parallel. You cannot say those angles are congruent because they're alternate interior corresponding. It had to be through substitution, addition, halves of equal quantities are equal, all right, it had to go through there. So anything, last call? Okay, let me see your work. If you don't have your calculator, go grab it while I'm coming around to look. Okay. Yep. All right, just uh, we're going to go uh, a little something. We're not going to stay in the same order as your packet is in today. And let me explain why here. Uh, so we know Tuesday is our test. All right, Tuesday, sorry, the quiz. Tuesday is our quiz. It was originally going to be a Monday, but I already did that to you this year. So I didn't want to do it a second time. So I pushed it to Tuesday, which means Monday we're going to review for it. All right, this is probably one of the only quizzes during the course of the year that we'll review for, and that is day four. Okay, day four in your packet is review for the quiz, so we will not be doing that until Monday. So instead, today, we're going to hop over to day five, which is slow. But I just want to make sure we're clear. The quiz Tuesday only covers days one through three. Slope will be covered on the unit test. All right, yes, I will still be checking this homework on Monday, but it's not covered on the quiz. It will be covered on the unit test. All right, so everyone slope today, homework over the weekend, Monday review day four, Tuesday quiz. All good on the setup now? And then next Wednesday, you will need your compass. Just looking way ahead. Next Wednesday, you're going to need your compass in class. All right, so let's hop into this because uh, we have a shortened day, as you already know, and we're already out of here at 11 o'clock. So that only gives me about 35 minutes now. All right. All uh, right. This is no proofs today. This is something I think you have saw last year. And then during the middle of the notes today, I'm going to tell you why we're doing slope in a parallel line too. All right, I want to bring it in. But before I do any of that, I want to review some concepts from Algebra 1 last year. Uh, number one being, anybody remember the symbol for slope or the letter, I should say, for slope? Because it's not S. Matt, you remember? M. It is M, yep. And you guys probably had a formula. If I've given you two points on a line, how you can use those two points to find the slope. Anybody remember that formula? Go in. Josh? Y2 minus Y2. Great job. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, right? Uh, I also will provide another one that probably you're familiar with, and I love to use this one when I graph or if the line is already on a graph, all right, and I don't want to plug in numbers. I use M equals rise over. Anybody want to finish that one? Run. Yep. Rise over run. Okay. Uh, another review. There's four types of slopes. There's positive if a line's going uphill, negative if it's going downhill. Here's where I need you to be is these two right here are important at the end of class today. If you have a horizontal line like I have in the third diagram, we say the slope is zero. It has a slope. It has a slope, but it's zero. Versus a vertical line, we say no slope exists, undefined, okay? Again, horizontal line, a slope exists, but it's zero. And undefined, none exists, all right? None exists for a vertical line. All right, last year, does the, ter does the uh, term point slope, remember doing something in point slope form? I don't care about that this year. Standard form, maybe, where you have the X and the Y on the same side, don't care. There's only one form we care about in this class. And everything, all your answers will be left in what's called slope intercept, which is, I'm sure you're familiar with, y equals 
mx plus b two parts to that two parts first part is the m which we already discussed was slope and then the second part i want you to be familiar with is the b part which is called the y intercept all right those are the two things you need to put anything in slope intercept form first thing i want to do with you is if i give you the equation can you get the slope and y intercept for me already so number one it's already in slope intercept form can somebody pick the uh actually all of us can what's the slope up here what's in place of m four and the y intercept two okay so everyone's confident and okay i'm picking those up now i just want to quickly review how to graph this uh without plugging it into your numworks calculator and getting a table of values, right? The first point I can always graph is your y-intercept. Where's the two go? Because I have a two on the x-axis and I have a two on the y-axis. Where's it go? It goes on the y-axis, right? Because it's the y-intercept. Uh, problem is if you want to graph a line, you need two points, at least two points minimum. So where's my other point come from? What do I start using now? My yep, slope. My slope is four. And remember, I said I always like to use rise over run. Here's where I like to use it. So from two, I'm going to go rise four, one, two, three, four, and over. Yeah, remember, this is over one, rise over run. And because it's positive, when we say the word run, one, two, three, four, we run one to the right. And then uh, I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't care about a straight edge right now. Graphing is the least of my worries with you guys today. So just draw that sucker in. Uh, what do you notice about number two? It's not in it's not in slope intercept form. And you, hey, you cannot, cannot tell me the slope and y-intercept unless it's in y equals four. So the first thing you want to do here for me to get going. What do we got? Six, 16, 17. Okay, now we're back in business. Okay, here we go. 13, which we would, uh, oh, back to business. Good to see you here today. What the first thing I need to do to get that in Y equals 1? Thank you. Add 6X. I do my division at the end. A couple classes told me divide by 3. Get out of here. Yep, add 6X. So now I'm left with that 3Y on the left. And I always like to put the X first. So 6X plus 12. And the last thing I need to do here to get it into y equals form, 1, 5, Gabby. Divide by now divide everything, right? Everything by 3. So that 6 and the 12 get divided by 3. So in slope intercept form now is y equals 2x plus 4. Once it's in slope intercept, now you can tell me what the slope and y intercept is, which in this case would be Thomas. Good. And now you can go ahead and graph it if you feel confident. Graph four on the y axis, up two, right one. Bless you. Up two, right one. Okay. So you guys now know how to, or we just reviewed how to pick the slope and y-intercept off. Like, can we go in reverse and I'll give you some info. You give me the equation now. All right, give me the equation based on some info. And again, I, I don't care about point slope, standard form. All your answers should be left in slope intercept form, right? Slope intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. Uh, all right, so before we do that though, there are two things we need though. All right, if you're going to write your final equation in y equals mx plus b form, I need to know the m, the slope, and I need to know the b, the y-intercept. I cannot write the equation unless you guys provide me with those two values. And if you look at number three, I'm just going to say you're welcome. All right, yeah, you're welcome. No thinking needed here because I've provided both items for you right off the bat, huh? Oh, lucky you. Lucky you, honors kids. All right, Aiden, you're welcome. What's my equation, man? Ooh, that was a tough one. Wipe the sweat off. 3x plus 4. You won't see anything that easy again. Enjoy it. Now I'll give you one, but not the other. So in number four, I gave you the slope. Now how do I find the y-intercept? Right? Because this, hey, that is not the y-intercept. Don't take negative 4. All right? That's not the y-intercept. Now, I don't know how you guys learned it last year, 
and how you were taught, I do it one way and one way only. If you ever want to find the y-intercept, you use slope-intercept form. What is the y-intercept in slope-intercept form? Which one of these represents your y-intercept? B. So B stays B. And watch now as we plug in for y, m, and x. Okay, we're going to plug in for y, m, and x and solve for B. How are we going to do that? 10. Matt, you're going to help me here. Ready? The y is a y coordinate the line goes through. And I provided a point it goes through. And what's the y coordinate on that point, Matt? Negative four. So I'm going to plug in negative 4 for y. I already told you the darn slope was what? Negative one. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 for m. And what's the x coordinate of the point it goes through? Two. There you go. So you're going to use y equals mx plus b to solve for b. And I'm hoping you guys are comfortable doing that. Negative 4 equals negative 2 plus b. Uh, how do I get the b by itself now? What should I do on both sides? Gabby? Um, add two. Yep. Add 2 on both sides. So the b value looks like it's going to be negative 2. All right. Now I know both. Write the equation now in slope-intercept for me. What's my equation at slope-intercept? 5, Haley. y equals? Negative 1. Good. Yep. And everyone asks this every year. Can I not have the one there? Can I just put negative X? Sure. Whatever floats your boat, find your loss from All right. Whatever. Good. Number one, I gave you everything. Two, I gave you half the info. Now what if I don't give you anything? I don't know slope and I don't know Y intercept in number five. All I know is two points that it goes through. Uh, let's start off by finding the slope. How the heck do I find the slope here? Oh, that's why we started class off with a little formula, didn't we? That said, all right, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, can you give me the y coordinates you want me to plug in here? Y coordinates, 1, 6, z. Um, Watch your mouth. Negative 3n. It's the y coordinate. Zero. Zero, yeah, 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 you're bad. Order matters now. I want you to remind you that of last year. Order matters. Zeev decided to go with negative 3 as his first y coordinate. So my first x coordinate has to be 7, whatever it's paired with. You can't just mix and match them. Whatever y coordinate you pick first in the formula, the x coordinate has to go first as well. So I have to write 7 minus 5. Personal preference, I always leave my, my slopes as fractions. If you want to leave them as decimals, your call. I always leave it as a fraction, though, so this is going to be negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves. All right, I got the slope. What's the other value I need to find? Y-intercept, right? B value, same way I did it up here. But now we have a class decision to make. I'm still going to use slope-intercept form, Y equals MX plus B. Keep the B right there. Now let's make a class decision. Last problem. You only had one point, and I had to use the X and Y values from there. But now we have two points. Class decision, what do you want to use? Five, zero. Yeah, that's what everyone picks. It's just, I understand. Okay, if we use 5, 0 as the point. Uh, here we go, 1, 4. Gianna, what am I going to plug in for Y? Zero. What's the M, the slope we just found? Easy. Yeah, you're getting ahead of yourself. And how about now the X? Five. And I know this sounds mean, but I do not feel any sympathy for you that I'm asking you to multiply five times negative three halves because you all have calculators in front of you that do it for you. Hey, I do not feel bad at all. I don't care. I know the NumWorks calculator provides you with a fractional answer and a decimal answer. I don't care which one you use. My rule is only if it provides you with the decimal, the decimal runs across the calculator screen. Let's use the fraction. All right. Like this is negative 7.5. Uh, you can use that. That's fine. I'm, I, I'm a fraction guy, so that's how I roll. And how do I get B alone now? What do I got to move over and how do you move it over? Three, Aiden, how do you move it over? What do you move it over? Um, add the negative three Good. Make you add it over. You got it. So there's my B value. All right, you want to put the two together? What is the equation of this line here in this problem? 
Now it's the full equation. Five, Haley, hello, welcome back. Boom. All right, so a little, little refresh on how to write the equation in slope intercept. Uh, what was the name of this unit, by the way, we're in right now? Not the name of the course, the unit. Not the name of the day, the unit we're on. Parallel, Parallel and perpendicular line. So what the heck does this have to do with slope, right? Here's where we figure, we answer that question. All right, so I have a line. That's parallel, doesn't intersect this one, but goes through negative 2, 5. What's the equation of this new line? Before we do that, I want to fill it in this text box here. If two lines are parallel, and maybe you guys can answer this for me. Two lines are parallel. Their slopes are blank. Anybody remember from last year? What's up, Matt? The same. Equal. Yep. Same, equal. I'm going to write equal. So whatever the slope of one line is, that's the slope of the other line. Unfortunately, though, you cannot right now tell me what the slope of this line is. Why not? Don't even dare say negative one. Why can I not tell what the slope of this line is, Ian? It's not in slope-intercept form. I still need to do what before it is in slope-intercept form on both sides? Six. Thomas, what do I still need to do? It's not in y equals form yet, so I can't tell you the slope. So what do I need to do on both sides before I do? I divide it by, by two. You got it. All right, so the equation of this line is y equals. How do you guys deal with that right there, that negative 1x over 2? How do you rewrite that? Because I'm not putting negative. I refuse to put negative 0.5. I want to leave it as a fraction, so negative one half x, yeah. Plus, got to divide everything by two. Plus, two, yep. All right, so what is the slope of this line now? What's the slope of this line? Uh, one, three. What do you got there, Ksenia? Um, oh, 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 just the slope. Oh, um, Don't get ahead of me. Don't start showing off. Negative one, negative one half. So at least I know now when I'm ready to write my answer. It will also have a slope of negative one half. Why? What do I know about the two lines? They're parallel. So that means the slope of one will always match the slope of the other, but I'm still missing a value. What do I still need to find? Y intercept. How do I find it? Same darn way I found it the last couple problems. Use Y equals MX plus B. I have provided a point it goes through. Use that point for me now. 12. Olivia, what's the Y coordinate I should be plugging in? Five. Slope we just found was what? Go ahead, Olivia. Keep rolling. Yep. And everyone, again, I'm going to use the same slope because they're parallel. X, Olivia. Yep. Be confident. Plus B. Good. Go ahead. Do your, do your uh, magic here, honors kids. See what that B value is. One, Charlie, hello. What's that B value? Four. Four, yep. All right, you got both values now. Can somebody please combine them and let me know what you have here? One, five. Gabby, what's the equation of this bad boy? Awesome. Great work. So if they're parallel, I just keep the same slope and find the y-intercept. Ooh, perpendicular. Do we remember that one now? If two lines form a right angle, they're perpendicular. Do we remember anything about their slopes there? If two lines are, uh, quick refresh my memory. I, I'm not a big, I don't want to write out the word perpendicular. Symbol? Here we go. If two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are 
You want to try it, Amy? Negative reciprocals. Nice job. Only one today. Only one today. Even in the others honor, honor class, they did not know. Our negative, and this is the term I used to, negative reciprocals. Before we do this problem, what does it mean to have a negative reciprocal? You take the slope, <coughs> reciprocal, flip it, take the slope, flip it, and change the sign. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Whatever slope we find, we got to flip it and change the sign before we find the y-intercept. Uh, all right, so let's go to this one here. Find a line that's, wow, that's a hot mess, isn't it, this, huh? What a mess. I'm not finding the slope of that. You better help me get it into slope-intercept form, huh? Get it into y equals. What do you want to do first to get it into y equals? One, two. Olivia, what do you want to do first? Yeah, let's get that distributed to four. A lot of people have told me subtract three. You can, but make sure you don't combine it with the negative two if you do. I got to distribute before I combine. So y plus three equals four x minus eight. And then go ahead, yes, move the, move the three over. So here's my slope intercept equation, y equals four x minus 11. What's the slope of this line? 10, Matt, what's the slope of this line? Four, four right? Everyone agrees it's four, but I'm not gonna keep using that four anymore because they're not parallel. I wanna use the negative reciprocal now. All right, so I'll get to that in a second. So let's go find the y-intercept. I already gave you the point eight six. So here we go. Five, who's up here? Haley, you ready? Yeah. This is a big task. What's the y coordinate I should be plugging in? Six. Six. Now it's time for the slope. I don't want to use four because they're not parallel. I want to use the negative reciprocal. So Haley, hopefully, I, I have faith, is going to flip four and change the sign. And get what now? Negative one I had faith. Negative one-fourth. Everyone all right? Why I'm plugging in negative one-fourth now. I'm flipping four over one and changing the sign. You're not off the hook yet. What's the X coordinate? Um, eight. eight, good. Plus B. All right, do your magic. Let me know what the B value is when you're ready. Matt, when you're ready, you're on fire today. Eight. Eight, yep. Now the, I still need the equation though, right? Because that's what I'm looking for. What's the equation now of this line? Four. Here we go, Doyle. Show off. Take your time. Y equals? Y equals negative uh, one-fourth x plus eight. Thank you. Yep, make sure you use negative one-fourth, right? Not four. Okay, hey guys, did a nice job there. That's this is where I need you to be for the unit right here, doing this something that's parallel or perpendicular to another line. Last thing I need to do is some exceptions to the rule, and that is horizontal and vertical lines. And what about their equations? Because they are not the y equals mx plus b you think. Uh, so can you guys please take five negative one and draw a horizontal line through it on the graph I provided below? So graph five negative one. What's horizontal again? I don't know. It's copy off of somebody around you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the equation of this line. So all today I've been just barking at you guys about you need slope and y-intercept, right? Okay. Well, well this is horizontal. Go back to the four diagrams at the beginning of class. What was the slope of any horizontal line? Slope of any horizontal line was what here? One's, Will? Zero. Zero, right? So I at least know this equation, ready? It's going to be Y equals, don't copy this down. Don't copy this part down. Zero X, right? Everyone, right? Zero is the slope, but I put it next to X. And what about the B value here? And this is why I had you graph it. 
what's the y-intercept here? Where's that line go through the y-intercept or the y-axis at? One, five. Gabby, where's it go through? So it should be, right, y equals zero x minus one. Do you think I'm ever going to see that look like that? No, and I never want you to write it like that because what's zero times anything? Zero. So you are, you're not going to see this. You'll see what? Y equals negative one, and that's it. There you go. You can copy that part down. So for any for your rule here, anytime you're dealing with a horizontal line, the slope comes out to be zero, right? The slope comes out to be zero. It will always be y equals, what do we set it equal to? What did that negative one represent? Y intercept, yep. Okay, y equals your y intercept for any horizontal line. Okay, so you're doing a problem. Okay, you're doing a problem. The slope comes out to be zero. Boom! Automatic horizontal line. Okay, so over the weekend, if you do change in y over change in x and you get a slope of zero, it's got to be horizontal. So y equals the y intercept. Last one. Now, this one, this one's a beast. This one's a pain in the butt, actually. Big time pain. All right, go ahead, graph 4, 3, and put a vertical line through it. This one's a pain. And maybe you guys are starting to see why it's going to be a pain. All right, go back to the beginning of today. What's the slope of any vertical line? I figure out it's vertical. Six, Thomas, vertical line. Vertical line. Well, that's horizontal. Look back at the beginning of your notes. You'll see any vertical line. Horizontal line, zero. That's already taken. Which is, we can't do that, right? So we say undefined. You good? You'll remember that now. So anytime I have a vertical line, it's undefined. How am I going to write that? Undefined X? No, that's embarrassing. Don't write that down. And remember the second thing I need, the Y-intercept? Does this even have a Y-intercept? doesn't even go through. I got nothing. Nothing. This is why this is pretty, very unique and a pain. Anytime you have a vertical line, and I'll show you a little trick here. Anytime you have a vertical line, don't put this on your paper. That was 4, 3. Agree? Uh, let me graph this point right here, which is 4, 6. And then let me do it a third time. This point right here is 4, negative 5. You see anything in common? What do you notice? What's in common? The 4 is what coordinate? Say that again. The 4 is what coordinate? That's vertical line. A vertical line will always be x equals a number. All right, so vertical, x equals a number. And I hate writing that, but, and that number is going to be wherever it goes through on the x-axis. Whoa, 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 not done. Relax there, boy. Relax there, chief. All right, we got, we good? How am I going to know if I do the slope formula, if it's horizontal or vertical? So you do change in y over change in x, right? What's zero divided by anything? Zero, right? So that tells me if I ever have zero in the numerator, zero in the numerator, it's horizontal. Can you divide by zero? You can even check on your numworks calculator. It's going to give you an error, right? It's going to give you an error. So anytime you have zero in the denominator, Making it what type of line? What type of line? If I get zero in the denominator, it'll be vertical. Okay, so watch out for that. Now, to your homework tonight, over the weekend, please keep in mind, I'm saving you some stress. I don't want any graphing. The textbook pages say to graph. I do not want you to graph. I don't care about your ability to graph in this unit. It's your ability to write the equations. All right? Uh, what time did I say we got out of here? 11. 
Yeah, I'm not. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to have you guys open up your Chromebooks by the time there. You'll have like two minutes. So Monday we review, Tuesday quiz. All good? Okay. This is still due on Monday, though, but it will not be part of your quiz.